Hi everyone, it's us again, Pull on the Call Podcast. My name is Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Nat. And today we are so excited to get into episode two on the topic. The different levels of pole, the different styles and shapes and colors and everything yeah. of pole dance and how it all fits in for you and what, what should you do? Like where do you start? Yeah. That stuff. I love this. So um the reason why we wanted to talk about this is because when you go find the pole studio, whether it's on the website or you walk in and you see the classes they offer, it could be overwhelming. You're like, oh my god, there's intro to floor, there's intro to pole, intro to floor, level one. Level two. They might have silly names. Yes, intermediate <laughs> pole, beginner pole, advanced pole. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of break it down a bit um, right now. Um, do you want to start with the most, I guess, beginner? Yeah, I guess, but yeah, beginner. So like, let's say you've never taken pole pole class before. Um, you want to look for a class called intro to pole or beginner pole. Um, level one pole would be a good place to start. Um, if you've had experience in other studios and you're um, unsure of what level you should be, you can always contact the studio and see. Um, but I would never um, maybe assume that someone's level one um, in one studio is going to be the same as another level one. Yes. Um, with that being said, there are some studios which, not knocking any studios, but they unfortunately require you to take a pole test. Um, I should put that out there. <laughs> um, so before you even enter a level, some studios will require you to do certain tricks before you can take that class. I'm not sure if I agree with it, but it works for them. So kudos to you. Um, so after you look into your beginner course or if you've already done your beginner courses and you want to move up, you might want to go into um, a level one and a level two. There's so many different ways I've seen this. Um, some studios do level one slash two, which is to get you from level one to level two. And then other studios will do level two, which is just intermediate tricks, um, working on your invert from the floor and solidifying like your knee holds and things that you should be able to do low, um, which will also be considered kind of intermediate pole, depending on where you go. And then if you want to even go further, you have... Well, like our studio, we, have, we, I mean, we only have four poles, but we don't have a lot of students in the community, so we combined our level one and two. So we've got yes. our level one and two students in the same. So they'd be like beginner, you know, intermediate. Um, for us, those students will be learning all of like the static spins, the, you know, the walks around the pole, different points of contact, different hand holds. And then the level twos will be, you know, climbing up the pole, um, doing more of that sort of thing. Yes. Um, then after your level two, you get into, you guessed it, level three, <laughs> which is a little bit more, yes, inverting. It's a little bit more fun, a little bit more challenging. It requires a lot of core strength and a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. Which would be introduced in level two. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go into it more in depth, for sure, in level three. Yes. Um, even like competitions like PSO, um, Level two is for those with not a good invert, but who can invert maybe once or twice. And then level three is when you really should be inverting and stuff like that. Yeah, um, for our studio, a lot of our students yes. are competition students. So we kind of model it after the levels for our pole sport organization. Yes. So that's how we, we do it. So like level three would be the, um, the aerial inverters. Yes. <laughs> so you'd yes. be up in the air, um, you know, inverting and doing more than one tricks. Yes. Uh, up the pole. Um, and other studios and even countries that might get into um, high, intermediate, beginner, advanced, but then after level three, you get level four, <laughs> <laughs> which is now you're like more comfortable upside down, you, you're doing multiple tricks in the air, maybe you start to incorporate some dynamic stuff. Um, um, less like, points of contact. Yes, even <laughs> inverted combos instead of just one trick, you go from one trick to another to another. Um, here at the studio, we do level three and four, which is taking you from 
really training your inverts to you should have your inverts and we're working on shoulder mount inverts we're working on advanced inverted tricks and different ways to go from there um, combos and things like that um yeah the level before you will always um provide you with the yes. the information your yes. muscles need to move on to the more advanced facts um, when you should advance. Yes, that is such a good question. <laughs> when do you know when to advance? Yeah, a lot of students come up with they're like, when did I get out of level two? <laughs> yes. When did I get out of level three? And um, our studio is kind of easy for us to, to assess that because we do combine the levels. Like you're level one, two, um, we have a level two, three, we have a level three, four. So mm -hmm. you kind of like, you can see <laughs> um, how you are as compared to everyone else in the class and kind of like, um, you know, classify yourself as maybe more of a level three than a level four in the class. And you can visit level two, three, and you can visit level three and four and still be okay. Yes. Um, but for other studios, it maybe they'll have like a test. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> I did not like that just because I came from a studio that was like that. And I kind of got trapped in a level because I could not do this one move um, on the right and the left. And there's going to be some moves that you're never going to get. Um, and you, I, for me, I don't want to be trapped in a level because yes. I can't do this <laughs> So your instructor will definitely be able to help you, but it's also on what you feel. Um, if you want to push yourself, like, I know I might be high level two, but not yet at level three, try that level three class. Mm -hmm. The worst that could happen is you completely you suck it? and have to go back <laughs> and do level two. And that's okay. At least you got your work out in for that level. Free. You got to experience it and you got to tell yourself, yeah, this isn't for me. I'm not ready, but I'm hoping that you are ready because usually we are ready and we stop ourselves and we hinder ourselves because we're scared because it does get kind of scary the higher you up, yeah. the higher you go up. Yeah. <laughs> um, after level four, it's level five. Yes, level five. <laughs> It's kind of, not all studios do level five. Um, it's really considered advanced pull, and even some studios combine level five with pro level. Yes, yeah, that's what I was gonna mention too. Level five is when you, you know, well, in our studio, we pretty much mastered what is to be mastered <laughs> of the <laughs> basics of doing everything. <laughs> And, and exploring, and then you become, you know, uh, a content creator of new things in full. <laughs> then you be level five. Level <laughs> five, um, you sh what you should expect. You should be able to do multiple tricks in the air, like combo, combo, combo. Um, yeah, it's really combo heavy, um, especially in birds. You should be able to get from a brass, from a shoulder mount into a brass. I need to do this. The to endurance do yes. to do all of these things. Yes, yeah. it's really, it really is pro level. That's why some studios connect there because you pretty much do everything. But unfortunately, some countries and some competitions they separate it, <laughs> which no comment <laughs> by all means. But I would say level five is kind of. I'd consider you a pro because that's some pretty good shit. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and then the different styles of pole. Yes. <laughs> we can talk a little bit about the styles that we have at our studio. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wearing the pleasers. And these will be in our um, sexy style classes. We have yes. um, sexy tricks class would probably be like the beginner. Um, well, not really beginner. It's an all levels class where you do progressions of tricks that would be in a sexier style yes. um you learn how to dance in these beauties <laughs> um and then we have like a sexy floor work class where you you know have your knee pads on you be on the floor mm -hmm. doing some, those tricks and progressions um and then there's a sexy flow class that we have uh, if you like to do more of like dancing and not too worried about like learning new tricks you just want to flow them all together um, that would be the sexy flow class. Very good cardio. Yes. <laughs> you want to get sweaty. Yes. <laughs> we also have, um, as Mandy Max went into earlier, we also have the different levels, of course, because some people just want to train those tricks. We also do mixed levels, which is all inclusive, which is pretty cool because um, we do 
we start with level one tricks, but then we give advancements for those who need, are ready for it and need it. And it's pretty nice to come in as like a level one, a level two, and then see someone higher than you and be like, wow, that could be me. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. We are, yeah. It's and inspiring. Oh yeah. God, yes. For some people, the, the mixed level pull is too much for them. They don't like to be around um, other pullers who are doing more amazing things than them. Yes. <laughs> that is a very good That's point. why, you know, it's not for everyone, but yes. some people like to be really inspired and see what yes. comes next. We also do different classes. Like we have an incredible instructor, Miss Kelly Torsa, who created Pole oh, Ballet. Way which I personally love. I haven't been able to go home last month because it's been crazy and I'm so sorry, Kelly. But <laughs> it is, um, the way she set it up is you do about 20, 30 minutes of ballet warm-ups with the plies, the ramajams, and all of that beautiful ballet stuff. Ballet Ballet, yes. <laughs> and then you do 30 minutes of a ballet routine, which incorporates the cone, and it's gorgeous. Always gorgeous. Yes. Makes me um, cry. <laughs> I'm so bad I missed it this month, but it will get better. Yes. We also do, like, I teach Latin flow because my Hispanic heritage, every month I try to change the theme. Like this month we're doing bachata. So, and last month we did merengue. So what happens is I'll teach you, or yeah, I'll teach you. I don't know if other teachers are doing this kind of flow. If you are, come find me. <laughs> but um, what I would do is I'll teach you like the Spanish step, the bachata step, the merengue step, the salsa step. And then from there, we go into a choreo, which incorporates simple pole moves, but mostly you get that Spanish dance, that bachata. That if I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else do we also do? We also it's pole fitness. Yeah. So like if you um, know that you are bad and you don't do mm -hmm. your pole conditioning, mm -hmm. you can come to pole fitness class. Um, at our studio, we, we each teach it differently, yeah. but it's always <laughs> fun and you get all of your conditioning in. <laughs> it is similar to other studios pole conditioning classes. It's not trick heavy. It's working on building the strength, like your pull-ups, working on your grip strength, like your pole climb, yeah. leg hold. Your endurance, yes. too. Like sometimes we'll be like climbing races. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much calisthenics on yeah. steroids. <laughs> or like, we'll like have you, you know, upside down in your um, cross ankle release, and we'll try to like pass the yoga ball to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I have not experienced that yet, but that sounds like fun. <laughs> We also do, we just started Create a Flow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, which goes into, we'll give you like six tricks and all their variations because I we try to make sure those tricks come with different variations. And you can pretty much string them together with whatever entrances you want, whatever exits. You don't have to go like Jasmine to Genie to like Ember. <laughs> you can, those will be like the moves you might get. The jasmine, the genie, the ember, and you work it in like a pirouette into a jasmine, slide down, speed bump, stand back up into your ember, things like that. It's to give you the freedom and ability to just create by yourself, just mess around, just flow with it, see where this takes you. And we also have pole flow. Yes, which is a guided version of the creative yes. flow so like if you are like so overwhelmed and you don't think that you are <laughs> capable of making your own flow yet you just come to class and you'll learn a flow on spin or static pole and and kind of get the feel of like how the movements mm -hmm. would flow and then maybe get your own movement patterns from that yes yeah. we also do pole inversions which is in other studios but by different names i've seen a pole inverted pole inversions and spinning mm -hmm. um pretty much what that here what that class focuses on is inverting whether you have an invert or you don't have an invert we'll take everything from the floor because all the moves we teach are from the floor or can be done on the floor and then we do add conditioning to work your way into an invert and so far every student that has come by has so at least awesome. done one which pumps me up love it <laughs> but the, um, i have seen that in other studios they also use that class to incorporate spinning because yeah. um, what i learned while teaching pole inversion is a full hour of inverting is not doable for everybody <laughs> so it is nice 
to incorporate something else. Other studios do spin. Mm -hmm. I do 20 minutes of ab workouts on the floor, which you will love. <laughs> That's like the, um, we had a handstands class at one point, but it's too much to just do handstands yes. for the full hour. So we have a class called Base and Floor Tricks, and we go through different types of handstands, but we also incorporate some floor work, yes. um, different types of things. So you're not just like always trying to like hold that handstand. <laughs> Because handstands are a journey. Fact. So we just finished talking about different styles that you'll find in our studios. And it's you might find them in other studios by different names. But there's also different categories and divisions and other styles you might be interested in if you want to go into that. Yes. <laughs> I feel like when people, you know, off the street, they're, when they think of pole dancing, they always think it's sexy. And that's totally a big part of it. But pole dancing can be whatever. You yes. want it to be, um, there's so many people who are innovating um, and, and creating different styles. So yes. you could be uh, dramatic, um, you could entertain people, mm -hmm. you could be like weird and robotic. Yes. <laughs> you could do championship, which is a trick, I want to say trick core, but person who loves yeah, tricks only. Really like a technical, yes. you know, like really into like the gymnastics aspect Straight of it. Straight knees, pointed toes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Shadow band. Oh, yeah. Oh, you were talking about the, the different um, PSO categories. The, anything that I've oh. seen, because I don't think like pole circus is naughty, which is kind yeah, of like yeah. shadow band. Mm -hmm. I was first taught shadow band, but then pole circus is just naughty flow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like anything else in this one. Yes. <laughs> but you'll also find different things. Like, I know we try to incorporate chair dance, which other studios yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and like, I mean, as far as like innovating goes, I, I'm, there's like, if you follow Pole Fiction um, on Instagram, mm -hmm. which is amazing. She dances in the heels and sneakers um, and just coming up with really cool, like yes. non-conventional moves on the pole, um, kind of like flying around with no gravity. Yeah. <laughs> so with that being said in the different categories, Feel free to make whatever the hell you want. <laughs> yeah, right. We've seen um, pole dancers come out with like um, roller skates on. Yes. Like, yes. What else? I have seen <laughs> the most manliest men make the most manliest thugged out routine. <laughs> and, it, in its own right, it was sexy. It wasn't the sexy you would expect, like, ooh, splits, open this. But it, it just, the way those da that those dancers embraced their masculinity and brought it to the floor, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. So mess around, just have fun with it. It's pose not set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to be sexy ever. Mm -hmm. And when I first started mm -hmm. too, I was like all against it. I was like, I'm never gonna, yeah, whatever. Same I'm here. just gonna like try these tricks. Same here. But then I was like, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here. I was a, I started as a stripper and I made my money by being a trick whore. You did not see me do any floor work until I started coming here. I hated floor work and you can even see in my videos how bad I am sometimes. But um, that is part of growth, just learning and experimenting. Now I like the floor work and I like incorporating the floor work with the tricks. So. Yes, yeah, and the more styles you get in, into your body, like you'll um, get your own movement qualities, yes. which is what we're all in it for, to dance whatever's in our heart. Yes. <laughs> so don't let anybody tell you you're in this level pole, mm -hmm. you're in this category pole, you're in this style pole. Just don't listen to it. Just, okay, thank you. And just <laughs> go on because there's no, if you, if someone's telling you you're level one, but because you're not passing their test, you can't be their level two, Maybe it's time for another studio who will let you into their level two because that's the only way you're going to grow. It's like you said, you don't want to be trapped. Yeah. But then on the other hand, you don't want to be like the level one person <laughs> who thinks <laughs> that they can just skip ahead and go to level four because that's dangerous. So yes. as long as you have safety in your mind and you um, are developing at a rate that your muscles can recover. Because yes. um, like, what I've seen is too, like a lot of beginners will want to like advance as fast as they can and they'll like do a million like pole crunches. And then, you know, 
Like your abdominal muscles, there's a whole bunch of them here, but like you can rip them yes. by over overworking them. And I've seen it happen a lot of times when beginners will get injured just because they get so excited that they want to advance. So just honor your practice and your journey and um, you know, go at your own pace, but don't let people hold you back. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with what she said, because I'm glad she brought that up, it is so very important. As instructors to it may be very uncomfortable for you to say, you might need to step back, but it is very important for you yeah. to say it. Cause like she said, it's safety. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who will be like, I could do it and push themselves. And unfortunately they can't. So it might be an uncomfortable conversation, but that's your certification on the line. That's your insurance. You, it needs to be it's had. It's your responsibility. Yes, yeah. it does need to be had. So I am very glad she brought that up. Is there anything else you want to discuss for this episode on those levels and no, categories and like, styles? It's ever evolving. Like you yes. can take it wherever you want and, um, you know, let's go with you. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad we talked about this because we did get questions about it. Like, um, some people were asking, I don't want to do the sexy. Like, do I have to do a photo work? Um, mm -hmm. Do I have to work here? I was, no, you do not. Yeah. No, you really do not. And you can just stay in the studio with it yeah. or you can like, you know, you could compete with pole, you could, you could be a stripper, you could, you know, there's so many places you can take pole um, yes. if you love it. And all you know. strippers are pole dancers, but not all pole dancers are strippers. Yes. And if you are a stripper, so what? You should be getting into the studio to become a pole fitness and then <laughs> your stripping game up. But <laughs> that's just me. And also we can benefit from the stripper yes. scene as well. We definitely yeah. can. Because a lot of us are too scared to go to the strip club. Yeah. It's so, it's so <laughs> sad, but true. Yes. <laughs> it is very sad. Thank you so much for coming out and listening to this episode. <laughs> um, what levels um, there are, Paul, what styles, and how you should improve. I don't know if there's anything else I think that's a word. I think that was it. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you have any questions, of course, reach out to us on our Instagram, on Paul and Nicole. Make sure you get our freebies. Yes. Our free ebook and our free email course. Um, you can sign up for them like below, <laughs> <laughs> and it will get sent straight to your email. Also, visit our website for our other offers that we have. You can also even find links if you want to take classes with us yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. Any of the classes we just talked about, yeah. um, most of them are available online. You can just join in online. With yeah. Us. So if you want to take a class, even if you're in Puerto Rico or over state seas, take the class with us. We would love to have you. It might yeah. be a different time, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it work. Yes. <laughs> we'll even put that link in the bottom to make it easier for you. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming out. Um, my name is Chris Rivers. I'm Mandy Mack. And we are signing out. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>